on this episode. The Wardens gained the upper hand throughout the entire front, particularly in the West, as War 91 matures. A multi-angled naval landing runs into several key issues, forcing the Warden Sigma Regiment to improvise. Checkpoint Bua remains a hotbed of skirmishing on the front line. The CMD's JCR-122 provides a Warden perspective. Also, more of your story submitted to the Discord in Submissions Review. Live from Studio A and Press Corps World Headquarters, this is your weekly review of the Foxhole War. This is Pressing Matters. Morning, afternoon, or evening. For the Press Corps, I'm Jeffrey Jennings. Here in the 91st Conflict of the Foxhole War, it's day 296. The Wardens hold the momentum, particularly in the West, as this North-South War begins to leave its early phases. Combined deaths so far total over 1.5 million, with the Colonial suffering 5% more casualties. The region with the highest combined death count so far is Endless Shore, at over 230,000 dead. The majority of those casualties coming from the southern and middle thirds of the region, particularly around Saltbrook Channel, its southern outskirts, and Iron Junction. In the west, the Wardens continue their lockdown of Fisherman's Row and Ferranic Coast, with the occasional legionary incursion along the regional borders. Meanwhile, in Westgate, Sevish troops have made headway from their forward position at Sanctuary, taking the northern positions of the Gallows, Ranchers Fast, and the Handsome Hideaway Observation Tower. In the central region, Sevish forces have recently taken Lockmore central city of Fairmore, with the fight still raging on. The Colonials are holding out still in the Salt March, Deadlands for now, as well as Maidens Vale, Marvin Hollow. Both positions, if lost, could spell for major setbacks in the only places the Legion has made any success so far. And in the east, the Colonials continue to cling to their forward position of Iron Junction in Endless Shore, where the Wardens have been unsuccessful in their bid to dislodge the Legion and lock down the region. Meanwhile, Warden troops have crossed into Tempest Island and captured the relic base at Lost Erkel, continuing from their lockdown of God's Crofts over a hundred days ago. That's our look at the map there in terms of the fights that are raging on across the front lines. But we're going to try something different here. All right, well, we're going to try something different here, and that is the, uh, we're going to try for weather. We're going to try and do a very quick, uh, very, uh, as, as much as we could there, a, uh, a weather update. A lot of this data uh, captured just an hour before the show's airing. And uh, with that, we'll leave it uh, to Press Corps' Zach Dawson uh, for that update. Uh, yes, Jeffrey. Uh, reporting live out here on Westgate along the colonial front, uh, we're seeing a nice sunrise with clear skies and about level three north winds. Taking a look at a bigger picture across the front, our storm chasers are reporting clear skies uh, to the southern regions with heavy category three to five winds in western regions. Any artillery pieces in that area will need to keep an eye on the nearby flags for any chance of any successful firing missions today. And reporting live from Westgate for the Press Corps, I'm Zach Dawson. Jeffrey? Very fast, very sweet, very short. Uh, just so people know, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> that's incredible. You know, I always make a comment on how short uh, the actual show time is for all the work we do leading up to it. And uh, yeah, you spent about an hour plus time gathering all the data in order to make that accurate report. Um, that is correct. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you. Uh, just for the record, we do not have any special access uh, to any weather data. Uh, there's nothing in the API that allows us to uh, get a peer into where weather is and how, how, it's, uh, how it's moving. Uh, so it really is just a matter of our reporters going out into the field, usually on a bicycle if they can find one, uh, and just writing down, hey, it's sunny here, it's weather here, it's uh, snowy up in the north. Now, we uh, did have some trouble trying to find some uh, some of that information up in the north, so there may or may not uh, be snowstorms. And again, uh, because it takes so long to do this manually, uh, by the time this airs, uh, or rather at the time of this uh, airing, uh, there may not be uh, some of this weather, may, some of this information may have changed, but we gave it a shot, and we do have a fancy logo to show for it—the Press Corps Weather Service. 
Uh, so Zach, thank you, really, thank you uh, for putting in the effort for this. We'll see if we'll continue it in the in in the in the future and ways we can refine our methodology. Uh, but Zach, I, I'm really milking this for all it's worth because you <laughs> literally did over an hour worth hours worth of time for about 30 seconds of report. Uh, it's all good. If anybody wants to hop on and help out, that'd be a of course a great help. You know, we are wanting people for a warded side because uh, we are missing that data. And if anybody has any good ideas on how to capture data uh, better than just going around and writing it down, uh, by all means, throw it in our Discord channel down below. It's tough, yeah. There's 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 some suggestions floating around. We do we do have warden reporters, contrary to popular belief. We do have warden reporters, but of course they were, uh, you know, bit uh, busy. I mean, who can blame them, right? This is all volunteer. So Zach, once again, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Moving on to our top story here, snow. Water, cues, stealth, and artillery. These are only a handful of factors that can affect an operation. But each one can be a world of pain on their own. The Warden-based Sigma Regiment faced these very issues in an attempt to strike a blow on legionary positions. The press corps' Sam Cleese has more. War 91, day 194, Howe County. A snowstorm has gathered in Howe County the only source of heat and light located in Fort Red. Inside is a bustle of activity. Many warden soldiers of the Sigma Regiment converse and crowd together in the warmly lit room, snow littering the windows, making it almost impossible to see outside. Morale is high, with many of the estimated 40 infantry laughing and taking photos with one another. These soldiers are gathered here for a debriefing of Operation Hammer of God. However, Many of these soldiers will not return. Before long, the leader of the operation, Sigma Red, appears on the platform, flanked by his fellow officers. There he gives a speech to the men and women who will be fighting under him, outlining what will occur. I think we're all brushed up on this, and I hope that we're all able to come to some sort of conclusion that we're all on the same idea. So infantry pushing west from Old Jack Tar into Lockheed, Artillery is set up south of Osterwall, shelling over to Lockheed. And now that all the artillery has been fired and everything like that, once you guys are done maybe, you can either get some more ammo and continue if we need it, or you could maybe loop around and come join us as infantry. Or attempt to get a barge or some kind of boat across and land in Lockheed as an infantry force. Eventually, the infantry and artillery crews split off into their own areas before travelling down south into the old Jack Tar. The infantry is well equipped thanks to the long preparation in cooperation with Clan Extinction. However, this preparation would have little effect on the obstacles they would face along the way. Cues Cues of soldiers waiting for permission from High Command to join the front line littered the outskirts of Regents. The region that was planned to be attacked, Endless Shore, was coincidentally also the home to an apparent operation by CL, which in turn meant that High Command was no longer allowing any regiments to move in out of fear of overcrowding. When reached out to comment, CL Laskard could not confirm or deny that an operation was taking place. However, did confirm the presence of CL troops helping out the effort. We're travelling through into Marvin Hollow right now. Get yourselves ready, artillery. Roger. We're starting to soften them up already. Sigma officers improvised the changing of the location to the claim in Marvin Hollow and decided to attempt a naval invasion with artillery support from the nearby FOB. Cues in this area were much smaller but still existent, but slowly but surely, infantry began to receive permission to move in and commence preparation. In position, ready to fire. That didn't take long, can all to hear him. Quite an accurate shot as well, from what I'm saying. I believe we can make the, start getting the infantry up now, since I don't see any signs of watchtowers or anything. Artillery, I need you to start firing now. Wait, wait, wait. They have all. They are shooting. They are shooting. I can actually see it. Don't stop. Continue the show. Good well. On the cliffside facing Lockheed, oh, three artillery shot. pieces were crewed and firing minor shots into estimated colonial defences. Trucks carrying ammo travelled back and March. forth, resupplying the crews that were slowly increasing the pace. Oh, oh, it's a friendly barge. Friendly barge. <laughs> That's true. On the nearby beach were three naval boats carrying six infantry each, and two smaller boats carrying two. 
This was the invading force. After the green light was given by Sigma Red, the boats drove off and traversed the waters. Well, it's not my plan, I don't know. Uh, we are going to uh, north e northwest of uh, Lockheed. Uh, to the beach. Oh, yeah, the... Over that observation tower is? Uh, yes, that's the only way we can reach. Okay, I think... infantrymen, I am back. I'm assuming we're all well rested and ready to go for this mission, yeah? Yeah, it seems so, yeah. Drivers, are we ready? FMK, because you know where you're landing? Uh, yeah, I know. Um... Wonderful. After several minutes of tense waiting, the invaders finally arrived on the beach to absolute quiet. Besides a few watchtowers, there were very few defences in place. It was almost underwhelming as the force slowly moved up the hill and into the forest. Keep moving up the hill, Suddenly, a Man hail of gunfire. Right, they're gonna have people coming over to our location now. Get ready, east side. Fall back, fall back to the west. Fall back westwards. The invaders ran back to the rocks that acted as cover on the beach. It almost turned into a type of alpine warfare, but alas, the invaders were slowly taken out one by one. The boats had retreated, and several wardens were left behind, plus me. Over the radio, I heard leadership call for Sigma troops to hold out. Whether for backup or evacuation is unknown. Try and arrange to get the barges back. Pull the barges back if oh, possible. Uh, we, we went back to base, actually. Fuck, we've been left behind. Yeah. Okay. We're stranded. Um, we can, we can if you've been left here. behind, continue fighting, gentlemen. You, you won't be left there. We're going to come back with another barge and get ready. Hold on. However, it was clear that Operation Hammer of God had not been the decisive strike it was intended to be. A mixture of a fairly small naval invading force, plus high queue times by Warden High Command, led the operation to be significantly weakened. However, it did showcase the good improvisational ability of Sigma officers in the wake of sudden obstacles, as well as helping to cancel out the colonial push on Old Jack Tar. In a strange way, Sigma was able to assist the originally intended region so it can be argued that they were successful after all, even if it wasn't in the way they thought. Unfortunately, amongst the wave of people left behind was me. I and two others survived the colonial push by courageously hiding on the cliffside. Sadly, I lost my footing and fell into the freezing waters below. Miraculously, I survived drowning at sea for 10 minutes and was able to be rescued by the arriving marines who proceeded to resurrect me after cracking my ribs when performing CPR. This is Sam Cleese, and with the press corps, my abdomen is in constant pain despite the pills. For the record, this would not be the first time an operation will be called Hammer of God, so please excuse us if your Hammer of God operation happened before this one. On that note, with over 91 wars upon us now, operation names and regiments are going to be they're going to have to be really creative uh, to be original. So uh, that is not a task I envy at all. I was lucky enough that no other uh, streaming uh, channel uh, was called Press Corps, but here we are. But yes, be on the lookout for all of that, for all your D-Days, Dunkirks, and whatnot. But once again, excellent reporting from Sam Cleese. Marbon Hollow has been a heavily contested region here in War 91 and the relic base at Checkpoint Bua has been home to multiple battles centered around its bridge. The warden-based Colonials Must Die Regiment, better known by their tags as CMD, lays claim to recent successes there. In a, in a roll call interview with the press corps' Santiago Tulio, the CMD's JCR-122 discusses an operation undertaken approximately day 241 to 242. From the press corp, this is Santiago Tulio, referred to in game as Studio, and welcome to Roll Call. A look into the regiments, or in this case, a person, that make up this thing that we call Foxhole in the regiments or persons on wards. In this edition, I'm joined by JCR 122 from the regiment CMD or Colonial Must Die. So, um, J JCR, um, how are you today? How would you like introduce us um, to everyone? 
Uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Thank you for having me. This is a real pleasure and an honor to be on uh, Press yeah. Corps because uh, since I've started, I've seen some of your st stuff here, and I think it's uh, wonderful work that you all do. So thank you for having me. Let's talk about your operation that you did yesterday night, or well, here at the east uh, east coast of the U.S. It was like a little after, not afternoon, little noon till night time. So how was it? How did it all begin? And did that did that operation have a name or? Well, how yes, was it? actually. Um, well, it was called Operation Finally. For the past three days. Or if, uh, actually five days that I've been on uh, Checkpoint Bua, the bridge uh, Lugbone Dam uh, has been a virtual stalemate um, the bridge goes down, no one can cross uh, each side is kind of stuck and uh, last night we changed that, we attacked across uh, made the farthest gains uh, that we have to date, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Yep. Uh, we even established a bunker base on the other side of the river, um, which was not planned. We we were not uh, thinking... Well, it, it wasn't planned in the original uh, goals. Uh, the original goals were just to push them as far back as possible uh, with securing the other side of the bridge for uh, a couple hours, which would have been more than we have in the past uh, couple days. Uh, but we achieved far beyond those goals, uh, even being able to establish uh, the bunker base temporarily, holding uh, the other side of the bridge for consistent uh, seven or to eight hours of uh, time. Yeah. And almost, uh, we even, I, I was even able to use Binox and see into the heart of Maiden's Vale. Yeah. Uh, so... They they got the collies were put on the back for pretty heavily and they were scared. Uh, they were absolutely scared. Um, they had to bring in all the reserves they could get. They even brought up a, a bunch of field guns, uh, you know, like to counter our attack, and it didn't even work too well. Uh, they only uh, succeeded when we finally decided we'll give them some space and back off a bit and. Uh, so it was a massive success, uh, thanks to everyone who participated in that, whether you're in my regiment or another one. And if you have no regiment, obviously come join us at CMD. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, so it was a massive success. Yeah, and uh, you call it because you broke this stalemate between Checkpoint Boa, or or what? You, why you call it like a great success? Isn't it? Isn't it like a, just a success, or uh, do you think this advance maybe for a, for a longer term, or this advance will happen just immediately? Um. Well, it's a great success because uh, uh for a few reasons. One, we now have intel on uh, deeper operations behind at Maiden's Vale. Two, uh, uh, the second reason here is that we absolutely destroyed uh, their defenses. Uh, all behind the line, their defenses have uh, crumbled. We've we pounded it with so much artillery that uh, they they will take a lot of resources to rebuild. Uh, third is they had to use a lot of resources in uh, trying to um, hold on to Maiden's Veil. Vale. In fact. Uh, I believe it is the Scorpion tank. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not familiar with all the Kali tanks. Um, but the double uh, machine gun on the tank, that one uh, was captured uh, We pretty early on in the operation. Uh, our our uh, boys and girls over there uh, captured a Kali tank. Okay. Uh and got it back behind our lines and then turned it around and used it on them uh, in the upcoming assaults. Uh, we knocked out a number of tanks and other vehicles. Uh, we caused them to dedicate, uh, I believe I saw four, uh, two to four pieces of artillery that they had to uh, designate, which means some other front uh, that the Collies might have uh, pushed back yesterday was uh, saved or at least slowed down 
um, because we drew a lot of their attention. And uh, that, that to me, is a complete success, especially when our goals were to simply hold the other side of the bridge for a short period of time, and we uh, completed that objective four times over. It so. seems like a, like a great success, like how you narrowed it down. It, it seems like it. And how are, how are your, what are your expectations on this? Like, do you, do you expect the Wardens to advance or do you expect them to cause another stalemate a little bit more, a little bit farther on enemy, well, not on, on colonial territory? And what do you expect that your future operation would be? Like, do you, do you think you, you'll have another operation like this uh, further on Checkpoint Buha? Or what? Um... I absolutely believe that uh, we will have further operations. I have some currently in the works uh, that I need to uh, reach out to some other people, and who, which is all uh, you know sensitive material. But uh, and and I won't go into the details of those operations for obvious reasons. But uh, I do have new plans now that I have found uh, their weak points. I've seen what our weak points are, um, and I've been able to. Uh, adjust uh, plans accordingly. Yeah. So uh, in the next couple weeks, uh, Collies of Maiden's Vale, beware, uh, we're coming for you. And uh, we will take back Maiden's Vale for the glory of the Warden Empire. Another stalemate here by JCR122 here from the CMD. That highlight comes from Roll Call, a press corps series centered around the various regiments that make up this thing called Foxhole. Stay tuned to the Press Corps Foxhole Desk YouTube channel for when the full interview is released. We'll be right back after this commercial break with more of your submission reviews. This hour of Press Corps is brought to you by Warty Burger. Leaders taking into account your feelings, quartermaster being polite, Enemies telling you GG while you bleed out? When you just aren't getting your daily recommended amount of sodium, order a big, juicy, triple-decker Warty Burger at Warty Burger. Topped off with a signature mooring mustard. Now served with the all-new Callahan's coleslaw and Siva sweet potato fries. Located at the salt farm, Deadlands, home of the deadliest deadlocks, and, in a completely unrelated note, the freshest salt. Warning, due to an increase in local warfare, Warty Burger has been shut down by order of the Ministry of Health. We apologize for the inconvenience. Warty Burger, because you probably deserve it, you bastard. Tired of spending an hour building defenses with your small, sad, and potent hammer? Buy an auto hammer from Build and Go. Build defenses like nobody's business. Get accused of hacking. Turn the tide of the war upside down. Build and go auto hammers. The cheat that keeps on cheating. And now it's time for submissions review. The following stories were submitted by users in the submissions text channel in the Press Score Discord. Frequent uh, poster in that channel. Once again comes the Jade Cove Herald, the story, uh, particularly honing in on the top story there from Saucy Rambler. Quote, Winter's Letter. The war is over, and I, for one, am grateful as I approach Jade Cove after a long absence from the city. Legionary troops are re-establishing themselves in the area following the armistice, and while some I may my rusty blue uh, Durham truck with suspicion, a familiar lieutenant grins widely and wa waves me through the town's northern checkpoint. More of the good stuff, I hope, Mr. Rambler. Now my favorite border guard knows better than to ask such things of me, though I could use some of your boys to unload this uh, brewery at the Herald. Of course, man of the people, you are Mr. Rambler. My boys will help carry the load in you for the usual compensation. I will polish off the whole bottle with your uh, with your onesie on it. If you don't, don't you worry. Oh, there you go. I will polish off the bottle with your names on it. Don't you worry. Magalini meets me at the front of the Herald as the first crates of Sievish whiskey are being unloaded by Frank's men. Oh, thank God. You know, we were down to five bottles following the occupation. 
The Northerners almost hit the floor when they saw we were the only establishment in town with their favorite whiskeys. Very profitable period for us. We might be able to patch some holes before the next round of fighting. Letters are at your desk. Meet you in the lounge after you catch up. To say my desk was piled high with mail was an understatement, but leave for a month and you come to expect it. Battle report, propaganda, bill, battle report, summons for mistrial, battle report. Only a single letter caught my eye. A battle envelope uh, adorned with snowflakes and a legionary gauntlet grasping a grasping a bee mat. I, I hushed the other leaders and open I hushed the other leaders and opened the intriguing envelope. SR. Legionary High Command has deemed us formal has given us formal authority to reactivate your term of service to be carried out with your regiment. We are prepared some of the lodgings for you and of course your favorite beverages. We simply want our story told so no one ever forgets the man of Winter Legion. Signed Winter Legion SM Andrew. Well, who am I to pass up a summons to service and free drinks? I'm to report to WL's bases base first thing in the morning for now though it's time to drink with colleagues and of course pour a round of for frank and his men word is war is on the way that one coming from the uh, jade cove's saucy rambler sorry for the very stunted reading i didn't realize the uh, the 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 picture i was looking at was that pixelated but that's all right that's on me for not asking for a clearer picture but yes, that one coming in about it. Very interesting lore that comes in through uh, the various channels. Uh, for some people, it's more, uh, you know, reg uh, hardened and uh, sanitized battle reports. That's honestly where I lean more towards uh, in my personal uh, taste. Because uh, I think it, there's, there's some more interesting things we can verify there and cross-check. But I always get a kick out of the uh, self-lore that people like to write up there. And that one coming from Saucy Rambler from the Jade Cove Herald. We'll revisit him in just, we'll vis revisit that publication in just a little bit. But for now, transitioning to this, um, uh, this, uh, this, this submission from Wealthy Llama. Uh, Terran Republic Outfit Log, alias Wealthy Llama Outfit, HMRD, Rank Officer, April 17th, 2860. My platoon was preparing for a redeploy on mission to disable a Vanu warp gate on Amorish. We'd cracked the codes to their secure warp channels and were planning on redeploying inside their base of operations to bring a swift end to the war. Something went wrong. The northeastern warp gate was destroyed while we in transit. Now we're somewhere else. May 1st, 2860. The snowstorms didn't cause us much trouble, but there is some sort of EM interference shorting out our gear. We've managed to head south, but the stars aren't in the right place. This is an Araxis. We lucked out and found a small hamlet of farmers. They say, to the south, they say far to the south is a town called Cuttail Station. Maybe the locals there have more information. May 3rd, 2860. This is, there is conflict in this region. The locals say they are being invaded by a colonial regime. We will help these people fight off these invaders, secure peace, and then get information from the other side of the guy under the guise of mercenaries. We are no strangers to war. If these colonials seek war, we shall stand as soldiers no matter the era, no matter the cost. God help these wardens of the north if we discover that they are less justified than they say. Perhaps there is a natural element in this war that can give us better intel. That one, once again, coming from, I believe, HMRD, that might, that might stand for Hammer Rod or Hammer Down. Either way, Wealthy Llama giving us some uh, multiverse or rather multidimensional uh, insight. Uh, actually, you know what? This might be official confirmation of crossover uh, between Planetside 2 and Foxhole. And what, 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 what better way to make me happy than uh, the, to confirm that? Maybe it's not developer confirmed from either developer, but you know what? In our in our hearts and minds, it it'll certainly be so after this. Thank you, Wealthy Llama, for that. We now here um, going to switch to the Jade Cove Herald once again. Their headline here: Shrinking tanks. 
uh, mishap in the wash. But we're not actually going to cover that story in particular. We're going to go back here to the front and center story here in the center column. The Faces of Winter, kind of a part two to the previous story covering the Winter Legion, coming once again from Saucy Rambler. Winter Legion HQ, Cannon Smoke. An acrid smoke fills the air as sparks fly off of multiple vehicles. The place is a cacophony of machinery, engines, and shouting. A tempest of mass activity, if I can even attempt to describe the orchestra of chaos that sees trucks screeching out of loading bays full of equipment destined for far-off fronts. Cronus Winter stands in the center of it all, a tall yet heavier-set man with a white beard immaculately kept. A Masaian, a Masaian cigar in his hand exaggerates his expressive emotions as he instructs several young legionaries on proper loading techniques. It's all in the knee, lads. Save your backs the strain. That's it. You've got it. My smart potatoes, you are. The men all beam with pride as the strange compliment as they disperse to load freshly minted artillery shells into crates. This is his regiment, though two other men stand out in the crowd. A scuffed up lad covered in fresh mud waves a fresh platoon of mechanics on board a line of half-track half and trucks headed to the front, shouting for them to hurry. Pack it in fast, gentlemen. Mech boys get the, got themselves in a nasty scrap north of Farmore. The last platoon loaded up in half this time. Move it, move it, move it. McLovin, put that out of your driving. Put, put that out, you're driving. A glassy-eyed legionnaire pinches a small roach for a final puff before tossing it and climbing up into the cab of the second hauler, giggling. The rest all shout in unison, Yes, sir, Mr. Demon, sir. On the other side of the facility is a bookish fellow with a radio nearly glued to his ear and SM painted on his helmet. We have 91% coverage in the Red River and Heartlands. That's down 2% from yesterday. Dispatch tower repair. Truck 58, Colonial Rangers reports low munition stockpiles in Marvin Hollow. Retrieve stockpiles from nowhere 3 and slam. Oye, Andrew, sledges, when? Booms the voice of a giant man. The hauler's hood is caved in next to him, steam and smoke wafting up to mix with the thick haze of his place. What could you mean? They're already out. We both notice the sledge in his giant hand. It looks like a hammer compared to him. Fifteen minutes, Mr. Curse. I've got the lads finishing up your sledge out back, says Cronus, as he pats Curse of Life on the shoulder, diffusing the situation. I think he's the only one who could reach him, if I'm honest. Five feet in the front door, and I already know. These gents are cut different. Logistics to their core. Once again, uh, Cronus Winter's Winter Legion being the subject of this central story here in the from the Jade Cove Herald, uh, when that piece written by Saucy Rambler. These stories were submitted by users in the submissions text channel in the Press Corps Dix Discord. Make sure to stop by Press Corps World Headquarters through the Discord link below. It's always a pleasure seeing what people uh, what people come up with. You know, when we originally created that channel, I, I thought it'd be more, uh, like I mentioned before, things to cross-reference, being like, hey, battle report, yeah, we sent 20 guys here and we... Uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we managed to take out multiple assets from the enemy, et cetera, et cetera. And at one point, we did have a lot of those entries. But I think these days, people like uh, getting the, into their own lore, getting into their own stories, and uh, getting a little more poetic with it. And personally, I don't mind. It's whatever you want it to be. No guarantees that it'll make it on air. Uh, but uh, certainly, we've been having a lot of fun with it lately. So thank you to all of our, um, all uh, everyone who submitted to that channel and anyone who will. Well, that's all we have for this week. I just want to thank everyone in the press corps who participated in the making of this show. So much happening behind the scenes that you don't get to see uh, for this very uh, for this very sleek and well well done show. If you're on YouTube, you probably won't uh, probably the joke may not make as much sense. But if you're watching this live, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, plenty of hours of work, just enough for me to, to mess it up. But the artwork done by O'Brien, the stories from Sam Cleese uh, out in the field, the interviews happening uh, uh, in the studio, uh, thanks to Santiago, uh, the, the hours of weather report work done by Zach, um, and a lot of other things, people ready to go on the air if they wanted to, like Dracos, who was offering 
Uh, but we're just trying to figure out the scheduling on that, so you might hear from him next time. And basically, everyone else just pitching in. If I if I missed you, I think I, I think I got just about everyone. I probably forgot someone there. But the press corps is made up of all kinds of people, uh, all kinds of people who are uh, who who participate at will, and uh, it's it's an all volunteer thing. We don't make any money whatsoever. Uh, time and time again, we might, I just want to undercut that point. And uh, anyone who donates their time to this project, and frankly, anyone who donates their time to me, uh, I am eternally, eternally thankful for it. I put in my notes here, don't ramble during the sign-off, but I, I just can't help myself. So coming up next is more of your favorite music from across Raqqa and beyond on Press Corps Radio, playing 24-7, except when it's not. For the Press Corps, I'm Jeffrey Jennings. Good night and good fight. The Press Corps is a non-profit creative collective of artists, reporters, and players from the MMO video game Foxhole by Siege Camp. Our mission is to engross our audience in and amplify the stories of this unique war ecosystem. The Press Corps was founded in early 2018 by former Planetside 2 Radio Free Araxis host Captain in Arms. It is a separate community entity and is in no way representative of Siege Camp. For more information, Visit the Press Corps Discord through the link below.